Despite the flu shot, a near epidemic of the flu cascading across the country even before the normal flu season takes hold. The Center for Disease Control is saying that so far, 36 states reporting widespread cases of influenza. You can see that through the south uh, of the United States, and the strain is only partially covered by this season's flu vaccine. Here to discuss, family physician and associate professor at the Ronan University of Osteopathic Medicine, Dr. Jen Caudill. Uh, Doc, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, you think that you get the flu shot, you're going to be safe, but no dice. Well, no, no, th there is dice. Let me tell you, I mean, even though it's not 100%, the flu shot does give us a good amount of protection. And yes, it does vary from year to year, but it's still better to get the flu shot than to not. So it's, there's still time. So that, you know, Oh, my gosh, yes. And okay. remember, as you mentioned, you were talking about the flu season. Technically, flu season's from October to May, but the height of the flu season is December to February. February. That is right now. So I tell people, if you haven't gotten the flu shot, even though we're still the, the you know we're still the words out on how effective it's going to be, get it because it's one of our best chances at protection. So often they, when this happens uh, every couple of years, that they say that they kind of got it wrong, they guessed wrong which strain of the flu to immunize you against in the flu shot. Um, can they change the flu shot mid-season so they can make it better now against this strain that's out there? So there's a couple of things. Um, usually the way that it works is scientists, before the season begins, they work and they use all sorts of models to predict, try to predict which strains are going to be most common. That's how we develop the flu shots for that particular season. So we kind of have our flu shots for this season. But of course this information is going to go into next mm -hmm. season. And remember, the sort of estimates about how effective or lack of effectiveness for this year, honestly, those are based on models from Australia. So I still think that, you know, maybe it's not uh, the, the best coverage, but I think the verdict is still out. And I don't know that we know exactly how little it really is or not. So that's why I still say get the flu shot. Yeah, and, and, and anecdotal evidence, at least a lot of deaths, even of younger people now. That's right. Uh, across, especially the southern part of the country, the CDC putting out a map of where right. the flu is the very worst, uh, areas that are the worst highlighted right. uh, in, I guess that would be white now. It was red on the CDC's map. Uh, glad I looked up. So the, but why, why the southern part of the United States? You'd think where people would be getting sicker where it's colder. Well, so, you know, it's difficult really to say. I think the most important thing here is what you talked about, the deaths. A lot of people don't realize just how serious the flu can be. And every year, there are tens of thousands of deaths related to flu-related complications, and hundreds of thousands of people are actually hospitalized from the flu. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to say why which, you know, this state versus that state. So it's not, it's not like getting a cold where it's like, you know, if you go from hot to cold, hot to cold, that that you're going to get the, cold, the flu because of that. Uh, no, 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 not necessarily. Because remember, with the flu, we're talking about a virus. And even the cold is a virus as well. We're talking about viral transmission. So that's why prevention and hand hygiene and things like that, preventative measures for the flu is very important, because what's most important is how that virus gets transmitted. That's by us sneezing. That's by us coughing. That's you know, rubbing our nose and then touching someone or things mm -hmm. like that, right? So not Don't so Don't you just pleasant. love it when people do that? <laughs> yes, thank you. I, pre I appreciate the visual there. Um, all right, it is 1149 on New Year's morning here on the East Coast. If you still have a hangover, we may not be able to help you. But if you're waking up on, say, the West Coast, where it is 849 in the morning, haven't partaken perhaps a little too a little much too New much. Year's cheer, yes. uh, suggestions, ideas. Okay, so, I mean, there's a lot of sort of old wives' tales about, like, hangover cures, from eating greasy foods to having even another drink A little in the hair on the dog, to, yes. Yes, hair on yes. the dog, that's right. So, I mean, uh, just because I, my friends tell me about that, right. I would never, it's of course, try. It's not personal tried. experience, no. right? No, I figured not. Um, but so this is the thing. Truth be told is what happens or what works for one person may not be for the other person, but some things that are really helpful. Drinking plenty of water before bed, and sometimes electrolyte solutions can be very helpful. Um, now, sweating it out, I'm not sure what I think about that one. And hair of the dog, I prefer you not drink any more. <laughs> but um, sometimes painkillers can, can help. And what's not on this list that I wish were is sleep. Sometimes you just got to sleep it off. Exactly. And Stay drink in, in moderation. Stay in Next bed. Time. Keep watching us. There's another hour of us coming up. Heather here to tell us what's coming up on that yeah. hour. Drink in moderation. I like that tip. That's nah, always a good one. Nah, no fun <laughs> nah. there. Oh, come on.